Uriange, are you in? Unto a world weary of heroes, a hero wends his way. The Exarch did send word that thou would seek me out, but ne'er did I imagine thou wouldst arrive so soon. Full glad am I to see thee once more, my friend, and none the worse for thy travails. Run along, Minfilia. We will meet you outside. But... Another one for you to imbue, if you'd be so kind. I take it thou hast met with our other comrades already? Hmm. That Master Alfino and Mistress Alize now travel in thy company is of great comfort to me. As for the rest, it beginneth in earnest. The hunting of the Light Wardens, and perforce the war with Yulmor. Hark thee then to my words, and through them behold the vision that I did glimpse, that of the Eighth Umbral Calamity. As I drifted hither to the first, traversing the boundary twixt reality and potentiality, I did bear witness to events yet to come. There I saw the combined forces of Eorzea and the Far East offering fierce resistance to the legions of Garlemald. So fierce, in fact, that they did begin to push the enemy back, ilm by painful ilm at first, then yalm by yalm, and malm by malm in time. Yet the joy they felt was short-lived, for in so doing they did force the Empire's hand, faced with defeat the Garleans turned to a weapon most vile, Black Rose. Its potency defied all reckoning. Once released, the gas took on a life of its own, wreaking untold carnage not only in Eorzea, but in the provinces of the Empire besides. From fighters upon the front lines to babes in their beds, None were spared. And as the casualties became too numerous to count, so did the fabric of civilization begin to unravel. Nor did the land itself escape unscathed, for spreading from the site of its release, Black Rose brought death to the very soil. To survive amidst the chaos and upheaval, men came to live by the sword, the rule of law giving way, inevitably, to the rule of might. Thus was the spark struck and the fire kindled, and swiftly did it spread as a blaze in a field of straw to engulf every corner of the world. Nations worthy of the name did then cease to exist, and those souls brave and true who might have risen to restore order were no more, for the weapon spared not one. 
Not even thee. An endless age of war, begotten by the blight of Black Rose. Such is the legacy of the eighth umbral calamity which I did behold. No matter the cost, we must forestall this tragedy. To that end, I have labored during my sojourn in this world, discovering in so doing the answer to a pressing mystery. That of Black Rose's inexplicable potency. Come. Dost thou recognize yonder chart? Indeed. Tis a rendering of the elemental wheel, such as one might find in classrooms across the source. As the chart maketh plain, our world is composed of six elements, in addition to which, there exist two poles in fundamental opposition. Astral, the active. Umbral, the passive. As a reflection of the source, the first naturally comprises the self-same forces. Yet, curiously, there is a notable divergence in their nomenclature. To be specific, the denizens of this world employ not the terms astral and umbral. Thus was I moved to inquire what names said forces had been assigned. A simple question which yielded a most unexpected answer. Upon demanding the name of the pole aligned with activity and growth, I was told that as life's myriad colors combined to produce black, the people of the first had called it darkness. At this did my mind begin to race. Yet was only when I asked what name had been given to the pole aligned with passivity that mine eyes were opened to the truth. Peace and tranquility being as purest white unmarred by color, I was told it had been given the name of light. That's umbral light and astral darkness, yes? I'm no etherologist it strikes me that the nomenclature of the first is rooted in the generation of the two forces, while our own appears to focus on their effects. Which makes one wonder, have we had it backwards all this time? Tis indeed a compelling question, and one which beareth closer examination. Yet what knowledge we already possess sufficeth to explain the chain of events. The phenomenon of etheric thinning observed in the source is the consequence of light, the power of stasis, flowing in from the first to stifle the movement of ether within the land. And according to Master Alfino, Black Rose slayeth by halting the circulation of ether within living beings. Should such a weapon be unleashed even as the first were rejoined, replete as it is with light, We would have a disaster of untold proportions on our hands. A calamity. Well, at least we have a better grasp of what we're facing. Our objective, however, remains unchanged. We are to eliminate the Light Warden of Ilneg. Speaking of which, were you able to ascertain its whereabouts? Aye. Tis all but certainly ensconced within Leergear the castle which standeth in the midst of the lake. To enter said stronghold, we must needs turn to the Pixies for aid. Fortunately, I have become quite adept at courting their cooperation. Henceforth shall I accompany you, and do all in my power to ensure that my vision doth not come to pass.